Hey everyone, in this week's tip of the week video, I want to show you how you can apply the perfect amount of detail for any photo situation. Here we're going to be applying dynamic contrast to a landscape photo. And oftentimes when we shoot landscape photos, we're going to have a sky area as our foreground. So let's make sure that we go in and selectively apply this filter so that we don't apply too much detail to our sky and our clouds. We also may want to modify the tone a little bit to pull out some of the shadows and the colors. So let's add that dynamic contrast filter. And whenever you apply the dynamic contrast filter, it's always set at the natural preset here. The natural setting is small set to 0, medium set to 15, and the large slider set to 20. This is just a nice natural preset that pulls out some of the detail in your photo. But you can always cater the dynamic contrast filter to suit your photo's needs. For example, if I look closer at this shot, I can see that I have a lot of small areas of detail in these rocks and in this arch. So I can head over to my dynamic contrast filter and I can pull up on that small slider. Now that I've brought out some of the detail in these rocks and in this arch, I'm actually gonna pull out some of the shadow tones and maybe incorporate a little bit more color. So let's head over to our dynamic contrast filter and inside this tone area, I'm just gonna pull up on my shadows to reveal some of those darker areas in my shot. I'm also gonna make sure that I add in a little bit of true black to incorporate some nice contrast. I also want to incorporate a little bit of color, so I'm going to head down to this vibrant slider and pull up on it just a hair. So now if I turn this dynamic contrast filter off and on, it does an awesome job of bringing in a lot of nice detail and tone to my shot. But I don't want it applied to this area in my sky because it seems to crunch up the clouds and look unnatural. So if we want to remove this filter from the top area of our photo, let's go over to our toolbar inside of our masking brush and we'll head up and we'll grab our masking bug. You can also grab the masking bug by hitting M on your keyboard. Now I'm just going to drop it on this horizon line here and you'll see that I removed it from my clouds. But it's also removing it from this area on my arch. So I'm just going to grab my masking brush and I'm going to make sure that it's set to paint in. And now I'm just going to paint this back in from the areas that it got removed when I dropped the masking bug. So now let's go over and turn this filter off and on. And you'll see that it's only being applied to this foreground area and it's not crunching up the clouds. In this situation, we're going to be applying dynamic contrast to a macro photo. That means we're probably going to want to pull up on that small slider so that we can bring out all of the little details in these flowers. Also, because the flowers have a lot of color and vibrance to them, let's go ahead and modify the tone to bring out some of those colors and highlights. So let's go ahead and add a filter, and let's add dynamic contrast. And now I'm just going to zoom in real quick so that we can get a better look at the detail. So like I was saying earlier, for macro photos, I would recommend pulling up on that small slider so that you can bring out all of the little details in your macro shot. Notice how that by pulling up on that small slider, it's really helping to bring out all of those small details in the flower. I'll probably leave it at about 50. But now, because the flowers are really vibrant, I'm actually going to head down to my tone area and I'm going to pull up on the vibrance. And I'm also going to head up to my highlights and I'm going to boost them a little bit as well. So now if we zoom out and turn this off and on, it does a really good job of incorporating detail, vibrance, and a little bit of a highlight boost but I don't want that to be applied to the entire macro photo. I only want it to be applied to the areas that are in focus. So let's go ahead back into that dynamic contrast filter and let's go into our masking options here. I'm just gonna invert that mask so that it's not being applied to my photo. 
Now with my masking brush selected and set to paint in, I'm just going to paint this in to the areas that have focus. So now if we head over to that dynamic contrast filter and turn it off and on, you'll see it does a great job of bringing out a lot of those details and colors in the flowers. In this situation, we're going to be applying dynamic contrast to a portrait. That means we're probably going to want to mask this on selectively so that we don't apply any detail to our skin. We also want to be careful on how much of this filter is applied because it can be quite distracting with portraits. So let's add a filter and we'll add that dynamic contrast filter. And I'm just going to zoom in on her face real quick and watch as I turn this filter off and on. It applies an unnatural amount of detail in her face right here. So let's go ahead and we'll choose this soft preset style. The soft preset style strictly pulls up on the large amount of dynamic contrast so that it's a little bit softer and more subtle on your photo. So let's zoom out. And if we only want this filter to be applied to her hair and her shirt right here, and we don't want it applied to her skin, we need to head into our masking options for our dynamic contrast filter. We can select invert, and now the filter isn't being applied to our photo. So we'll just use our masking brush, make sure it's set to paint in, and we can brush in that dynamic contrast around her skin. There we go. Now let's head over and turn this off and on. It does a good job of incorporating some detail, but I wish it brought in a little bit more detail and also pulled away on some of the vibrance because it's quite warm on her hair and her shirt. So let's head down to our dynamic contrast and let's just pull up on the medium a little bit. I'm also going to head down to my tone area and I'm going to pull back on the vibrance here so that it removes some of that color from the detail area. Now if we turn this off and on, It does a good job of incorporating some detail and removing a little bit of that color so that it's not distracting to the viewer.